this early stage is so cold that it burns rich. It would require more oxygen to make that burn blue. And because it's around there, it's burning rich. It's burning orange. Next frame. Big time blue. Big time heat. But again, all the air isn't that hot. And it's going to try and get away. And it's only a matter of clicks. Next frame. Now it's really getting hot. And see, it's going rich around the intake valve. Next click. It rescinded a little bit in heat. Next, cl next click. It all went away. Now it all went away. It, br it burned so rich. Or it, it burned at the proper, you know, it burned very, very hot. and required a little bit of oxygen. But it got so thick, the oxygen could not keep finding its way to it. So it goes out. Next frame, it kicked up again. Really, really hot. Requiring less oxygen than it ever required before to get that hot. But it's going to grow viscous. And it went out. Just like that. One more click ahead. This is all happening in fractions of a second. It's going, it's kicking up, it's going out, it's kicking up, it's going out because the air gets thick. The, the air that's thick won't let more oxygen in, but the oxygen that is the molecules that are combining run out of oxygen and then it goes out again really hot starting to fade back really kicking up each time it kicks up the nitrogen took on more heat and it's easier for it to hit a higher temperature when it does burn and it requires less oxygen one more click starting to go out a little bit but the nitrogen is getting so hot now now it's so hot you're approaching top dead center of the piston it's so hot you can't see through the combustion chamber. You can barely see the spark plug. All the nitrogen is hot. It's slowly built up temperature that it hardly requires any oxygen at all to get back to the fuel that's burning and hit 2700 degrees, which is what you're looking at about right there. Even the spark plug is burning rich. The spark plug and the intake valve are cooling the air around it to the point where the oxygen that is what little oxygen is required to turn everything else blue, 2700 degree blue, is super rich. It's not getting enough oxygen around the intake valve. If you put more oxygen around the intake valve, it would burn super white and super blue. Next, next frame. One out. Frame before. 2700 degrees. You can't even see through it. One out. Next frame. Getting hotter again going out. These are frames, frame by frame. Next frame. Now you can see through the combustion chamber a little bit. But, but the oxygen has freed up and bam! Next frame you can't even see the spark plug. Next frame. There's not a lot of whitish blue, but the heat from the nitrogen, 25, 2700 degrees. Okay, now, let me double check myself here. Go a few frames ahead. Okay. It, 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 it goes cycles so many times that looking through this camera, I forgot where I was. Okay. If you, if you look, there's a ridge. Okay, that's the last of about 2,700 degrees. Let's go ahead. You see there's a ridge right there. That's the corner of the piston going up and down. If I click ahead and ahead, you can see the piston going down if you look carefully. Watch what happens as soon as the piston starts to go down. Now, these are all 2,700 degrees. You can't even see through the thing. 2700, no, all of a sudden, bam, you could see right through. There is so much heat in the small area, packed into the nitrogen, but as soon as you give it a little more area, it's uh, Boyle's Law. Put that piston down, all the temperature. There's, there's still some burning right there, a little after burning, but the temperature starts to really rescind. That's how you make horsepower.
So you go back. Scroll real quick. We'll go bring the piston back up. Just before the expansion occurs, you can see the terminal pressure of the engine is you know, in the first 15, 17 degrees of crank rotation, you get all the pressure. And because the engines are spinning so fast, at 45 degrees, uh, most connecting rods are pushing directly on the arc of rotation on the, the crank pin. So you get really pa effective power transfer with the most pressure there, providing that you have some inertia or some energy, some speed of rotation on the crank. 2700 degrees right there. So we'll go back and we'll, we'll you know, here's 2700 degrees. We're coming back on the other side of the stroke and you can see frame by frame, each time I push the button, it goes out. But each time, I, if I push the button ahead, it starts up again. If I push the button before, it starts up again. It burns and it, it goes crests and troughs. It burns and it lets up. It burns and it lets up. And that, you see, we're going back to the early part of the ignition. Blue. Oh, not there. Forward ahead, one frame, blue. Forward ahead, another frame, no blue. You know, 2,000 degrees, 2,300. Back, nothing, just kernels. Anyway, that's how the engine works. A lot of people say, uh, yeah, that there's a Shell Microjoule. It's a go-kart. Like it weighs like what a uh, a moped would weigh. Ten thousand five hundred miles per gallon. With an engine that's very similar to a, uh, it's like a lawnmower engine in some respects, or a, you know, weed whacker engine. And uh, it's funny. I, I know people who design things that say Shell's lying. Shell, shell's not lying. It's the heat rejection. It's the heat rejection. Uh, you slowly build up the temperature, um, and then it requires less and less oxygen each time it builds up and goes out to get it kicking again. And while it's kicking, it puts some heat to the nitrogen until it has to go out because everything's so thick that the oxygen can't keep going to the flame. And uh, 10,500 miles per gallon is no joke. It's about a 120-pound driver, a 75-pound vehicle. Um, but the same engine burning similar to this one. You know, this one's kind of okay. Um, probably probably 115 miles a gallon. If this was about a 50cc or 60cc, that's what this would get, maybe 140. So, uh, I've been a part of, uh, you know, racing and, and I've followed top fuel records and stuff. We always have records. I was talking to my friend today and, uh, we have locked in a real easy GSX-R1000 turbo that can run 690s and, uh, we, we don't do it. You can't, you can't really just jump into that because the gears are spaced so close together on, on sport bikes and street bikes and stuff that if there's a trans failure, you, you could have real problems. So you got to go slowly. It's like 750s now is what everybody runs with it. Um, the Stotts did it. He was 690 with a street bike on hydrocarbons. But there's fuel additives that do a lot of different stuff too. <clears throat> and uh, But anyway, th this is, when you know, find guys who know what they're doing, this is, this is the heart of the matter. The flame kicks up, it goes out, but this is like microns. I mean, it's really, really fractions of a second that it builds up and goes out, builds up and goes out, builds up and goes out. Um, they, uh, they've known about this stuff. In 1907, there was a guy who knew about this stuff. His name was Curtis, and if you look him up on YouTube, uh, his, his motorcycle, I think, was 137 miles an hour on a dirt road in 1907. But... Um, but it's good to know this stuff, and and also you can obviously see uh, coolant temperature, you know, the temperature, everything that's in there, how it's going to affect those cycles and stuff, and and the valve angle that changes heat and how your stuff's mixed up and stuff. But this thing's about to run out in 20 minutes is a long time for people to watch a video. But I uh, hope hope this helps you out. Uh, you know, there's plenty of books, and I'll do another video, and I'll I'll show you lots of the engineering books I have, and if you're into this stuff, thanks.